All right, you guys, this is Chapter 12, Section 5, Samples and Surveys. Our learning objective is to classify data and analyze samples and surveys. And in this scenario, I chose to um, write all of our vocabulary words in one place. And when you're doing vocab, it's really helpful to not only write the word and the definition, but also an example of what that item is. So that way when you come back to it later, you know exactly what you studied. So quantitative is data that can be that can measure quantity and can be described numerically. For example, when we have um, we collect data that's five feet, four feet, seven feet, four feet, eight feet, and ten feet are all quantitative because these are measurements or distance or something that um, is the amount, which is different than qualitative. So that's when we collect data that names qualities like red, blue, green. Blue and blue are qualitative data. All right, so univariate is a set of data that uses only one variable. It's like a unicycle is a one-wheeled contraption. A univariate is a one-variable set of data. So, for example, examine the temperature for the past month. So there's only one item that we're examining. It's temperature, so it's univariate. Bivariate, just like a bicycle has two wheels, bivariate is a set of data that uses two variables, like the edge length and volumes of cubes. So we're collecting data on the lengths and we're collecting data on the volume of the cube. So it is two variables within the data. Population is the group you are interested in. And then an example of a population is let the set of all males between the ages of 19 and 34 be the population. And then we have a sample. It's a part of the population that is surveyed. So a random selection of 900 males between those ages would be a sample of the population. In this case, we can't get every male between the ages of 19 and 34 but we are getting 900 of them. That's our sample size. And our last vocabulary word is bias. A sampling error that causes one option to seem better than another. Survey questions or samples, so the group you choose to survey, can be biased. For example, when you ask somebody's opinion, you ask, do you prefer exciting action movies or boring documentaries. So the way this word is stated has a bias. All right, so let's see if we can use this information and um, make something amazing happen. So number one, is each data set qualitative? or quantitative and explain. The costs of CDs is an actual amount that we can measure. So it is an amount that we can measure. So it's quantitative. All right, next item is eye colors. Now we're not counting the amount of eyes, but we are counting, we're keeping track of the eye colors. So this is qualitative. Since it is a characteristic, All 
All right. And let's look at number two. Is each set univariate or bivariate? And explain heights and weights of mammals. Because I'm not just collecting the height and the weight. I'm collecting both. This is bivariate. So let's write it in a complete sentence. Since we are collecting two items, and the cost of internet service from several different providers. We are only collecting the cost of internet service. So this is univariate. This is univariate. Since we are only collecting the costs. Ooh. All right, one thing to note, um, I pulled it from your textbook, is that when a population is too large to survey, like everybody in a country, Statisticians survey a part of it to find characteristics of the whole. So if you get enough people in that group, then um, it'll represent the, if you get enough people, it'll represent enough of the whole group. The part that is surveyed is called a sample. We are going to study three different sampling methods. The first one is random, and then the method that we employ is a sur to survey a population at random. For example, survey people whose names are drawn out of a hat. That would be a random population. Systematic sampling is when you select a number n at random and then survey every nth person. So select the number 5 at random and then survey every fifth person. So you let 1, 2, 3, and 4 walk through the fifth person you survey. And then the last sampling method that we're going to study is stratified. Separate a population into smaller groups, each with a certain characteristics. Then survey at random within each group. It's a little bit longer. So th what that looks like is separate a high school into four groups by grade level. Survey a random sample of students from each grade level. So let's take a look at an example of that. So DVD rentals. You want to find out how many DVD students, how many DVDs students at your home, at your school rent in a month. You interview every 10th teenager you see at a mall. What sampling method are you using? Is this a good sample? And then the answer is, since you are interviewing every 10th teenager, this method is systematic. This is not a good sample because it will likely include teenagers who do not attend your school. So let's look at our problem here. You revise your plan and interview all students leaving a school assembly who are wearing the school colors. Will this plan give you a good sample and explain? So let's see. Leaving a school assembly who are wearing So we have to look at which one does this most closely represent, and I think it's probably closer to stratified if we look, because we are getting students leaving an assembly, but we are grouping them off into students wearing school colors. Will this plan give you a good sample? Well, so instead of teenagers at the mall, it does represent 
the students of that school. Well, my only caution is it does not represent students that do not have school spirit and didn't wear their school color. But all in all, I think it's a good plan. All right, so the last two problems, we're going to take a look at bias. So here's our situation. A reporter wants to find out what kinds of movies are most popular with local residents. The reporter asks, do you prefer, prefer exciting action movies or boring documentaries? Is the question bias? Explain. The question is biased because the words exciting and boring make action films sound more interesting than documentaries. So let's look at this question. How can question, the question in problem number four be reworded so that it is not biased? And I would say, what if we just took out the adjectives? Do you prefer action? movies or documentaries. All right, in problem number five, we are going to determine bias in a sample. So our example is, we want to determine what percentage of teens ages 14 to 18 watch wrestling on TV. At a high school wrestling match, you ask every third teenager whether he or she watches wrestling on TV. How might this cause bias in the result of your survey? And the answer to that is the sample chosen is not representative of the population. People who attend a high school wrestling match may be more likely to watch wrestling on TV. So let's look at um, a different scenario. You want to know how many of your classmates have cell phones. To determine this, you send every classmate an email asking, do you own a cell phone? How might this method of gathering data affect the results of your survey? And one of the biases so um, This may affect the survey results. Um, since only a certain kind of person would reply to this email. Um, It may not reach all, it may not represent all students since the ones that don't know you or don't check their email often won't respond. Or let's say may not. And that is the end of this lesson.